Hey, this is Ben with my review of the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. Uh, I did an unboxing and setup video a little while back, and this is my review of the unit after printing with it for a couple hundred hours. This unit was sent to me by BC Hobbies in Victoria, British Columbia as a review unit. And I've, yeah, I've printed with a vast array of materials and kind of put it to its limits, really tested it. And so I want to kind of first just do a quick technical overview and just so you know, like the actual specs and stuff. So starting with the top of the printer, we've got our filament spool holder, where you, you can also mount it on the side, but I don't necessarily recommend that because the cable doesn't reach. So you're limited to this side, which is not an issue at all, unless you really want it to be on this side. Uh, this is the same as the Neptune 3 Pro. What is different compared to the Neptune 3 Pro is the cable kind of has like a guide in there which is which is making it a lot easier to build so it's not tangled in the belts. It's also got the banded dual uh, z-axis so there's a band or timing belt across this for higher accuracy. Coming down the z-axis here we've got our x-axis. On the x-axis we've got our belt tensioner here and we've got our limit switch and you'll probably notice unlike the Neptune 3 Pro it uses these metal metal linear rods and these metal pulleys and that means you don't have the the metal or the rubber wheels wearing down over time but you will have to grease it and then you've also got the regular V wheels for the z-axis which you'll have to tighten and eventually replace. You'll also notice this large part cooling fan this has four part cooling fans in it uh, and you've got an on off switch here to control that. Moving on to the tool head you've got your standard tool head. It uses a smaller NEMA 14 stepper motor and you've got your, your you can manually move it and you've got the lever for loading filament and then your uh, breakout board with the like the thermistor like heater coil and the inductive probe. On the side here you've also got <coughs> your, your little hole for adjusting the tension of the gears and you've got just like the Neptune 3 Pro two part cooling fans that blow air to the sides of the nozzle which is on this printer a stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle but unlike the Neptune 3 Pro it uses these high flow nozzles because it's going to be printing at higher speeds you need you need a bigger nozzle with more a higher flow zone and so this gives you that higher flow rate the problem is or what could be a problem is these are not like the standard V6 or Mark 8 nozzles. So you can't use your old Mark 8 nozzles with this or your V6 nozzles or even the Creality high flow nozzles because it's a proprietary thing. And it ships with two, it comes with one in the printer and then two extra 0.4 millimeter brass nozzles. And so a problem people were having is they couldn't print abrasive materials because it would wear down your nozzles. But I actually managed to get my hands on some aftermarket uh, hardened steel nozzles and these ones are also uh, CHT style nozzles so you get even faster uh, and higher fl flow rates so I'm going to be doing a review of these soon but these allow you to print stuff like carbon fiber which I've been doing without having to worry about destroying your, your three only nozzles and this because it's got a NEMA 14 it's a much lighter hot end so you can that, that allows it to move faster Moving down, we've got the, the bed here. Just like the Neptune 3 Pro and many all the other Neptune printers, you've got a spring steel PEI coated flex sheet with a bill volume of 235 by 235 in the X and Y and then 265 in the Z direction. Unlike the Neptune 3 Pro, the Neptune 4 Pro, not the Neptune 4, but the Neptune 4 Pro has a segmented heat bed. So in the, you've got one heat zone in the middle of the bed and you've got an outer zone which you can change the temperature of. So if you're just printing a little thing in the middle, you don't need to necessarily heat up the corners, which take more energy. So this will save you time and energy when you're booting up your printer. Moving down, you've got, unlike the Neptune 3 Pro, you've got four bed tensioning, uh, bed leveling knobs. So you can actually adjust the height of and the levelness of the bed without, with, with not, you don't, you're not relying on software. You can also mechanically do it. And then you've also got your belt tensioner and just like the x-axis, these metal rods, which you do have to grease. Moving over here, we've got the, I believe, 2.4 inch touchscreen. It's a really responsive 
great screen. It's one of the things I loved about the 3 Pro and I also love about the 4 Pros. It's just an amazing user interface and the magnetic holder. And then we've got new I.O., which is really nice. So you've got a USB 3 port for a USB stick, which is amazing. You've got a USB type C port and you've got a micro SD card slot if you really don't want to use the USB for some reason. And then on the side here, we've got just like an RJ45 Ethernet uh, cable, which you can plug into. And this allows you to um, connect to the Clipper web server. And so that's one of the things that's new about this printer compared to every other Elego printer, is it uses Clipper firmware. So unlike on the most other 3D printers that, aren't, that are running Mar Marlin or something, it'll be kind of like an Arduino style board, it won't have as much processing power. But the board in this is more similar to like, more like a Raspberry Pi. Like a sing it's a single board computer basically. And so what it does is it hosts a Clipper server, or like a, it hosts, hosts a server, which you can connect to. There's an IP address in the settings and you can connect, connect to it on your printer or on your computer. So you can control your printer and you can do all, send files to it and you connect to it remotely. Some, something like Octoprint. If you're used to Octoprint, it's like that, but with more customizability. So you can view like the mesh of the bed, how it's level. You can also tune things. So there's a config file, which has all the printer specs and all the different, like for the, an example would be the extruder speed or the number of steps per revolution. So you can tune your printer to get even better print quality. So one of the things about printer or clipper is when you're doing it, you have something called input shaping. And so input shaping, it basically, it, rec it has the, actual vibration of the printer and it compensates by that like noise cancelling headphones and so you get really fast prints because it can adjust for the slop or the vibration in the printer and stuff like pressure advance and all kinds of other features that you just need that extra horsepower to to do on the main board and so with this it has a very good stock profile but you can also attach an accelerometer onto the tool head or something connect it to the main board so you can tune those those input shaping, or you can also do input shaping through a series of test prints and like a ruler or calipers to make sure and you can input it like that. And so that is, a, that is one of the biggest features about this is the new firmware, because that'll give you the higher speeds that you need that for getting fast print times. And for print times, it's fast, it's wicked fast. This Darth Vader here took just over six and a half hours to do and it's at 20% infill and 0.2 millimeter layer height. That's stupid fast. Like compared to the Neptune 3 Pro, which I normally run at 80 millimeters per second, I printed this at 250 millimeters per second and the print quality is still pretty good. Um, for something like this, this headphone stand, it took again like six and a half hours, uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height. And there are some artifacts on this. It's not, the print quality is not like perfect but considering the time and considering it's a functional print I'm completely okay with it. Then something like this Benchy. This is like a 25 minute Benchy I printed or 20, yeah 25 minutes as a slightly modified uh, I don't 0.28 millimeter layer height but it still looks amazing and I you can't really tell that it was printed that fast. Um, for functional prints like this battery holder is what this printer is great at. This printer is amazing for functional prints just because when you're printing at really high speeds there's a trade-off for print quality because you just when you're moving that fast you're going to get some ringing and stuff like that but you can also turn the print speed down a bit and then you'll get really really good print quality even better than the 3 pro if they're both printing 80 millimeters per second because it has input shaping and pressure advance and stuff like that you're still going to get superb print quality so that is really nice. Another thing that kind of bugged me was the fans. Because I sleep with this printer in my bedroom, kind of next to my bed, um, these, I just couldn't run it with these part cooling fans because they are quite loud. But if I was going to school or something and I was just putting on a print, crank it to the max and then let it go. Because this really does allow you to do really good overhangs, but it will be loud. And even with it off, it is a louder printer because it's with the input shaping and stuff. It's a, it's, it's louder. And that's the trade-off for the faster and higher quality prints. But that being said, something that would take 12 hours, getting it done in six hours, if you don't mind the noise, if you can shave off six hours of print time, 
I mean, it, it's worth it in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, I, I think the the print speed is it, it's really nice, it's even with considering the, the the noise of the machine. One other thing I found was the um, the user interface. It takes much longer to boot up compared to the Neptune 3 Pro, and that's because it has to host the server. Unlike on the Neptune 3 Pro, it has to actually turn it on and stuff like that. And another complaint that people had was there's no Wi-Fi. It's an Ethernet connection, but because there's that USB port, I've seen people modifying it so you can put in like a little USB Wi-Fi dongle, and then it's um, it's you can get Wi-Fi. That's and that's pretty much it. It's I would say it's probably on my my number one budget printer for people. It can, when you look at the features and the price, it is probably the best budget printer out there because you can do very if you're an advanced if you're very advanced and you're doing stuff like that, then the, you can take full advantage of the config file and the clipper and all that. But if you've never done clipper and you don't want to have to deal with a Raspberry Pi, then you can also just not deal with that and you can just unbox it and print because the unboxing it was super easy I just took it out of the box put it together I haven't had a single problem with it since no mechanical failures I haven't had to disassemble the hot end and undo a clog like on some of the ender printers like the ender 3 v2 I've worked on like it's just there is out of the box printing as I've ever done and sure there's there's printers that are better but the bang for your buck on this machine is really good and I used to recommend the Neptune 3 Pro to everyone, but from now on, I think if you can deal with a bit louder noise, then Neptune 4 Pro is where I would buy. Just the print times is kind of the, the bane of 3D printing. It's the super long wait, wait times for something about this and these new faster printers. Being able to get prints that much faster is making it much better for rapid prototyping or if you're just printing large things, being able to shave sometimes like six hours off a of print, let's say, that's a that's a big deal. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about the Neptune Four Pro. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah.